Yeah, let's do that. Let's take a look at yeah, it. Okay. If you don't mind, I want to film a little bit. No, not at all. <laughs> yeah, this is this is exciting to actually be here where the magic happens, you know? Yeah. And these are these are these are just getting their start in life. Yep. Yep. This is Do you do those from patterns? Yeah. Uh, yeah, but they're my patterns. They're, yeah. they're not the same as anybody else. And he else. has a special tool that he, he gets this so thin, it's like almost one with the top. Mm. <laughs> yep, yep. So, uh, and that's, for, that's forward shifted X bracing, isn't it? Or is that... Uh, uh, yeah, you... You would consider it that, huh? It would be. I mean, the reason... I'm not copying a modern no. pattern because this is 25 inch scale. It is. 25 and 3 eighths. But there's a lot of strength right here when you get closer to the well, sound hole. Well, exactly. So here's the thing. If you look at a mark... <clears throat> Excuse me. That's a Martin. That's probably a D28 or a D18. Maybe? This was a four off. Oh, really? Yeah, which you don't see them a lot. No, you don't. But you'll always see a what I call a Band-Aid, but basically a piece of Cloth. linen put over there because they pre-shape the braces. Yes. Well, then... I mean, normally they're not quite that loose. Yes. But they are loose on the top. And that means that this can happen. Oh, see, yes. See, see that crack? I see that crack here? right down the bracing there. And it does happen fairly regularly. So... Uh, the way you do yours, you can actually tune the top by much right. as you shave off. Well, get... also, this is the same thickness all the way across. All the way, the way. My, I voice mine. Yeah. It's thickest. It's usually around 2.8 mm -hmm. to 2.9 millimeters right here on the treble side. Right. It's 2.5 to 2.6 millimeters here, mm -hmm. and usually 2.6 to 2.7 in, uh, around here. Cool. So I loosen up the whole outer edge, um, and in fact... Did you know, have you heard of flat iron? Back I have. Back flat, yeah, that's the predecessor to Gibson, Montana. Yeah, so <laughs> Steve Carlson now has uh, Zeta violins. And okay. Zeta um, is uh, it, it mostly, you know, electric violins, but he, uh, he loves the pickup and he ended up getting a, a mandolin pickup. Mm -hmm. And then he wanted to build mandolins again because Bruce Weber sold out to the two old hippies, LL, uh, what is it, uh, uh, Limited Liability Corporation. LLC, yeah, LLC, yeah. Which is Breedlove and all, all of the ones that are over there, and Weber and so on. They're up in Oregon, aren't they? Yeah. Or, yeah. And uh, Ben. Yeah. So he started doing mandolins again. Nice. And he asked me to consult with him. And eventually that led to me doing all of the, the bracing, the voicing, the voicing. The bracing. Oh, that's neat. So I think he's just getting ready to launch and he's built a good number, but these uh, are the eighth and ninth or ninth and tenth ones I've done for him. Oh, that's cool. So I've done like, I think maybe six this week. Four. I will normally only do two a week. Oh yeah. But you know well, he is, what I I consider that a real honor that not only he wanted me to uh, to uh, consult for him, but then that he wants to pay me to do the voicing. Oh, that's you know, nice. That's a really cool thing. That's that very cool. It kind of completes the circle of me starting with them, you know. And then, yeah. Uh, and it 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 it, it rejuvenates your. Uh, right. So normally, like if you were to tap on this, it, it's generally going to sound about the same here. Oh, you can hear some difference there. Yeah. Oh, I see. I was not on the top. Yep. So these, once I've voiced it, oh yeah. Hear how resonant it is? Yes. Much so, different. Yeah. So, you know, this is going to be another um, a, another square shoulder dreadnought like this. 
And uh, this is going to be a minstrel. Mm -hmm. This is going to be a, a, a minstrel uh, octave mandolin. Octave mandolin. This is the back for this. And there's I'm a match. The tops to those other two. And then I, I was showing you these. Um, yeah. This one. The completed box. Yeah. And where did I put that, that neck? I just had it in here. Oh, here. So he decided he wanted maple. Maple neck, huh? But it's got a match. Rosewood, so I, I colored it for him. Oh wow, dovetailed and all. Yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah, they're all dovetailed. That's the only way to do it. And uh, and that looks like that is a modern, isn't it? Uh, body style there, with the cutaway on it, or is that a? You know what? So that's kind of obsolete now. Oh, it is. Okay. The reason that well, it's it's not obsolete in that. Originally, the minstrel was only, a, the yeah. concept was it was 2009. All my custom orders had gone away because they, nobody was, ever, they were all afraid to yeah. buy anything until they knew what was gonna happen. True. So I was building guitars for next to nothing. Yeah. Uh, Getting your start. You know, 20, yeah, uh, the first four, 2,000 bucks a piece. Oh, man. And what I did is I said, there's gonna be two options, modern, and vintage. Vintage will be 375 more. It'll have uh, Brazilian fingerboard and bridge, and mm -hmm. it'll be a heavier neck, and it'll be the wider spacing at the bridge. You have uh, 30 minutes to talk to me about which is appropriate to you, and then you don't get to talk to me again until the end. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and then that's just to write a check. You yeah. Know? And the whole point was to eliminate unbillable hours because I, I spend so much time talking to people about oh. custom stuff. Oh, but yeah. what I found out was that, you know, very quickly people didn't want that that bottom layer. I was still voicing the tops and everything, but what they wanted were custom instruments from me. Pretty much. So now I don't I don't call it just modern and and vintage, I call it custom. Custom. That's what it is what Even it is. at that time I said, you know, you, I can build custom for you, but they start at fifty five hundred. Yep. So and now they're 65. So no. they really haven't gone up that much on the custom end. No, but, but there's a lot of hours involved in building one. I oh mean, yeah, a lot. You, you've you probably hundreds of hours, you know, you figure when you're putting a guitar yeah. together, you know? Yeah, I wish I could say, well, no, I don't really. I mean, you know, at Santa Cruz, for instance, just to throw one out there, I. I think we always kind of figured we were around 40 hours, which was a lot more than most factories were trying to be in the 10 to 20. But uh, what I've done since I've been building custom is I've just gone backwards. Instead of using any shaper fixtures, I've got a shaper over there, but it's got stuff stacked on it because I don't use it. Yeah. Uh, I use hand-stitched French rasp to color the that. Yeah. You know, basically, rasps are nice. That's how you, they you did know. it old school. You yeah. carved them manually. Absolutely. But you know, there's a lot to be said for the art, the art in it. You well, know? it gives it, I mean, I don't want to sound silly, but it feeds my soul in a way that and I don't, uh, you know, I mean, there's plenty of, I just had an apprentice that put a a chisel all the way through his fingers. Oh my so God. Even using hand tools, there are plenty of ways to hurt yourself. At my age, the last thing I need is to take my entire hand off no. my shaper or something. No. And more importantly, you know, even at a place like Santa Cruz, where we were still building a lot of custom stuff, we tried to use CNC necks. Well, then when somebody wanted a custom one, it meant you had to stop the normal production and that so Took away from this the... way I, every neck is custom exactly you know? and all they need to do is tell me well i like a v or let me bring in the guitar that i love copy that neck or whatever mm -hmm. and i can do that oh absolutely so, that is cool um now you saw the the shape of that euphanon mm -hmm. uh, i love that, that shape 
And this is exactly the same that, that I, it's not a copy of it, but, no. it's close, but then I put my own headstock That's your in own, back. that's like your yeah. own style. Yeah. I really like that neck. And I do this on, uh, I have a different shape. I don't think I have any. Do you do your own inlay there. work or do you, uh, yeah. do you, you do, okay. Yeah. Is that mother of pearl or yeah. what is, oh wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, and then, uh, yeah, this is this was for uh, uh, T Bone Burnett. Okay, you know who he is? I've heard of him. Yeah. He he won a Grammy for Oh Brother Where Art Thou, and mm -hmm. he he played lead guitar for Bob. Uh, he's a bluegrasser, right? He does bluegrass, but he's a like he he played lead guitar on Thunder Road. Okay, uh, with Bob Dylan, he he does it all. He, he does it all. Yeah. Uh, he's one of the biggest producers out there. Uh, that one's almost done for the Buddy Holly Foundation if they come back. <laughs> if they come back. <laughs> I haven't been able to hear from him since the, the COVID, COVID started. So. That's a, that COVID's a hell of a how do you do. You know? yeah. it, it knocked everyone on their butt. Yep. Well, it's still All knocking right. people on their butt, you know? So we can take yeah, let's go the over to the, two, to the other side there. Go check right. the factory out. Yeah. <laughs> Come on over, Janelle. <laughs> Just gonna stay here? Yeah. Okay. Okay. She likes to Facebook her friends and family oh, all yeah. the time. Sure. Oh yeah, this is where all the wood stuff is. Yeah, so I kind of let this go with with build up of cardboard every once in a while. That's for so shipping it's stuff. Yeah. Full, but yeah, I use it for shipping and everything. Um, here's where I do do the binding. This is basically rides up and down on, uh, and moves around yes uh th then everything else is just basic this is my dovetail i can do both the necks and the bodies in the same jig uh, this is drill press the basic drill press this is the one i always use for both uh, rosettes and sound holes and all that kind of thing that's that's a lot of work those rosettes yeah um you know, these are what I thickness the tops on. So once you once you cut a top, you run it through to get your ultimate thickness off of? Yeah, after I've got the rosette in it and everything. And what I do is... Do you imagine planing it the old-fashioned way? Oh. <laughs> I've done it. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it, it's very time-consuming. So this side is, uh, you know, 30 thousandths. Or this, no, that's millimeters, I think. Yeah, 0.3 millimeter differential between the sides. Look at the figuring on that. Man, that's beautiful. This is Baltic birch plywood. It never moves. It's just perfectly. Man, that's, man, that's beautiful. Yeah, it really is. That is. So I put the top on top of that, and then I can keep turning it. And it will give, it allows me to get both, a taper going both directions. Mm-hmm. Uh, you got your side sander here? Yep. Wow. And planer, table saw, uh, joiner, joiner, and there's a, I have another small joiner right there. Yeah. Nice. Then the big. I was going to get something a little bigger, but my dad died and this was his. Oh, man. And I thought, you know what? I need dad's bandsaw in here not something bigger just because i thought it well and you know what it's special because when you're working on it the memories come back you know right. and it gives you a connection to your dad yeah even though yeah. he's not here you know it you better believe it. you can you can uh you can you can probably hear him talking to you in your head when yeah. you when you're doing stuff you know oh yeah you know, I've got ventilation the, the big uh collector uh yeah, you do it right. Now the spray booth is. Uh, I'm this doing is where you, a little bit of clear right now, but for, it needs to be cleaned. This is where you do your poly, your poly, and your. Uh, I don't do any poly. No poly. All nitrocellulose lacquer, or this is shellac. Ah, nitrocellulose is better. Although shellac is okay. Well, I don't use shellac. Uh, shellac is is incredible as a sanding sealer, and and because of vinyl. Vinyl is what they usually use under nitro, mm -hmm. and it's got a huge molecule because it's man-made. And so, 
even though you can see right through it, it refracts light from that top level mm -hmm. because it's spanning the structure. This goes down inside and it, it creates a real chatoyance. Yes, it does. Uh, and this is, uh, so, and oh, then yeah. the lacquer goes over the top of that and the lacquer also will go down. It's a smaller molecule. Mm -hmm. And so you get uh, something that's much more uh, optically active, if you will. You get more uh, pop from uh, uh, figured woods and all that kind of thing. Oh, yeah. So, like I say, it, it needs to be cleaned right yeah, now but really hey. badly, but uh, it does keep everything in here. And there's nothing like the smell of lacquer. It's great. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I love it. My problem was I, I did uh, I did something funny. We uh, when I uh, just had a surgery done, I had a gastric bypass done in '09, and we had a a, a, a sink couldn't back up, so I put uh, liquid Drano in there and it wouldn't go down, and it squirted it all up on the refrigerator, oh, right? God. So I took the refrigerator out and I sprayed it with the special paint, you know, refrigerator paint. I gave myself um, what do they call chemical pneumonia. Oh my God. And it knocked me on my button. How they got, got it out of me is they pushed seven liters of fluid through me continually. Hooked me up oh. to a catheter and got it all out of my system. But I was seeing stars and rainbows and all kinds of stuff. It was crazy. Wow. <laughs> now I learn when you're messing with that stuff, you wear a mask oh, or a yeah. respirator. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy. When you, when you have those weight loss surgeries, your body doesn't metabolize things like it used to. All right, absolutely. It goes through you like uh, nothing, you uh -huh. know. So here's where. Oh wow. This is the uh, uh, the the bowls where I do the go bar deck. So I'll put, yes. I'll put bracing on, and then you know it'll push it down. Yeah. For gluing. Is, yep. Exactly. This is where they did the back roads of Montana. Must have did their uh, video right. of you in here. Yeah. And, and so, at this point, I had this... There's a Santa Cruz. Yep. I had this set aside uh, for repair. But then, like I said, he cut the tendon, and he's and he was driving all the way from Helena. That's a long drive. And he's not doing that anymore. So now I'm trying to decide whether... I had a, a good number of apprentices, and with COVID, I don't have any left, so... They're just not wanting to do it, or are they... Well, uh... one of them is... Uh, he was actually supposed to be here today. He's uh, His dad and mom are big part owners and producers of uh, both uh, Telluride and Rocky Grass. I see. Um, so he was really... He's been with me for a year, year and a half. But he's real depressed right now, and he's struggling with that. And he, COVID will do it. He's to afraid you. of the COVID as well, and so yeah, it's I, hard. I don't know. He, he'll do something like today. He called me, and says, "Hey, I, you know, no pressure or anything, but I'm just wondering, is it okay if I come in on Friday? And I, you know, you don't have to babysit." I was like, "No, no, no, come in. Don't worry about it." I, you know, but yeah. then he doesn't show up. So. That yeah. eventually gets to the point where I don't really consider him an apprentice anymore. No, that in this sense. It's been so long since he's been in. No, it's hard. This COVID has been really bad. It's uh, depressing everybody. And uh, yeah. Now these are. Uh, I do uh, arch tops. Oh. Some. Like the old, the old vintage. Yeah, stuff. I did. Actually, this was one that was I. I did 15 or 20 for Santa Cruz. They didn't do any other than me. Except the first two that Bruce and Richard did originally. You know, an arch top uh, sounds back. really good. Um, very acoustic. Yeah. They're... There's a guy out of Canada that, uh, Godin, he mass produces arch tops, you know. Yeah. And uh, I had one of his about eight years ago, and oh. it was okay. I, I forget what it was called. It was something New Yorkish sounding, you know. Mm hmm. But, uh, you know, it, it was too thick for me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I've got a couple of... The, I'm probably going to start building some octave mandolins with an arch top, an arch back. Ooh. 
That's nice. What those are going to be for. Um, oh, that'll be nice. And it's already got the it's already got the V cut to it, so you just right. start sanding and exactly. and art and uh, creating your arch. Yep. So. And this is where all your book matches are, where you you book match the side the the tops yeah. pieces. So I've got a little bit of cedar here, and then I've got a, a some all of this to here is Romanian Carpathian Mountain spruce. Mm -hmm. Then this is uh, to here is Adirondack. From here to here is Sitka, and then I have. Uh, all of that is white spruce, and then I have another bunch of it over in the next in the shop next shop. Over. Yeah, this is all either uh, Brazilian rosewood or I have both Brazilian and Honduran in the same press. That is uh, that is like uh, gold. You don't want to use that unless you have to. Right, absolutely. And, and you hold on to it as long as you can because that's like gold. You know. Yeah. Right. Exactly. <laughs> Oh man. And then uh Yeah, so the, this stuff works good for polishing uh guitars out with. Oh, if you can get it. Yeah, it's it's out of It's hard to they find. They don't make it anymore. They have a similar one that's similar to it, but it's not it's yeah. got cornuba in it, you know. This is cornuba and uh br br some other Brazilian wax. Yeah. But there's no uh there's no uh, silicone in it. Nope. So if you need to do finish over the top, you don't get a bunch of uh, a bird. I mean, yeah, I know. Shot. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. Anyway, and this is even connected down to my to the thing. thing. Yeah, I see it. You got your. <clears throat> that is neat. That is cool. <laughs> it used to get so dusty up here. Oh, I believe it. It was terrible. I um, believe it. And you can tell it gets hot. So I try to do my uh, hot hide glue up here. That, I've got a hot hide glue pot. There's a pot, there. yep. I've got one downstairs too, but I, I use fish glue as, uh, some as well as hot hide glue down there. Fish glue is good for quick and easy stuff, you know. But it, It's not quite as strong, but it gives you a lot more open time. So for something like gluing a top or back, um, I hair. was using hot hide glue. I actually find that the fish glue works uh, probably better. Yeah, and it's good for fixing um, bridges that are starting to arch up a little bit. You know, you can um, you can wick it in. You know, with a little bit of water and yeah, yeah. and uh, it's good stuff. Yep, that little trick works out good. Just a little piece of paper, just wick it under. <laughs> So anyway, yeah, oh, this that's, is a beautiful that's, shop. That's the, and that's my humidifier up there just turned on. What do you keep it at? About 45, 50 45 percent? 47. That's what I keep my guitars at. I've got them right now. Yeah. I've got the little packs, the humidifier packs in all of them, and I have the the uh, Bluetooth uh, uh, humidifier track thing that tracks it. And right now, I got it right stable at about 47 percent. Everything. Wow. And it doesn't move much. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. That's